Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the movie trivia showdown. Two matches left in the first round of the ultimate showdown. And joining me, as always, to call these matches, Baby Carrots, Mark Ellis. Hello, my friend. How are you? Christian, I am doing great, my lifelong pal. Well, the last 15, 20 years. Anyway, when you look at this matchup, we have someone who is somewhat of an unknown quantity in the Schmodown, but someone to be feared nonetheless because we know his movie trivia knowledge inside and outside of the Schmodown. But Christian, Vinny Mancuso, for all of his moxie, for all of his pizzazz, for all of his shirtless, sleeveless ability, we do know he's going up against a formidable opponent, maybe even someone who could one day have their beautifully four-eyed mug scratched upon Mount Rushmore of the Schmodown, and that is Ethan, big time Irwin. Yeah, I mean, look, Vinny's gonna. Vinny knows it. Vinny came in here. He had the play-in match against Sabrina Ramirez. He he played well and he got himself here. But Vinny needs to scrap. Vinny has only been playing, and this is his third match ever. He played one team. This is his uh, second singles match ever, and he he's in for it. He's in for a fight. He knows it. Like, is he ready for Ethan Irwin yet? Maybe not, but this is the, the this is the singles tournament, and it's a chance for him to prove it. We don't know yet. He's just started. Normally, in the way that the the season goes, he would build his way up to an Ethan Irwin, the way you would in a video game. You don't just go to the big boss. But in the Ultimate Schmodown, it is all hands. It, it's you're you're just ready to go. Gloves are off, and it's time to scrap. And it's exactly what's going to happen here today because if Vinny can pull this off, it'll be one of the bigger upsets. But Ethan Irwin is looking to mess somebody up. And it's not poor Vinny because you look at what he just did in a sudden death battle against Dan Merle. He's looking to mess somebody up. He is, but those can take an emotional toll and those can wear you out. So along, it doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to be primed and ready and focused on the next match. Now, some great advice my mom once gave me is you're never going to feel fully prepared for any sort of life endeavor you're about to undertake. At the time, she thought I was going to be a sports broadcaster. <laughs> How wrong she was. But for this particular match, I'd hey. say, Vinny, you go up against Ethan Irwin because that's what you're supposed to do. You're never going to feel totally prepared for it. Was I totally prepared to face John Roca? Were you totally prepared to face Sam Levine? Was Andrew Drew Guy ready to face Dan Merle. We've seen upsets happen before. It, when you come across Behemoth Christian, the best thing you can do is bring your wits, your knowledge, and maybe if you read the Bible, a sling to knock out Goliath. Yeah, I mean, and both of these factions here, the suspects and the dungeon, really need this win. Now, the suspects, to be fair, are putting everything they have in Ethan Irwin. They're putting everything they have. Uh, because it, it, it's already been announced. We, the team's tournament is going to be coming up in just about a month, and Ethan Irwin and Andrew Guy will be in that tournament. They will be playing in that tournament, and if Ethan Irwin can make it far in this tournament, make it far in the team's tournament, then the suspects, if they can get to some title matches, still have an opportunity to do something. But right now, they're in the cellar, and they need to get out of it. Uh, so, and if the trash mouth himself, Kaiser, can win one here. This would be a big, huge upset. Plus, the only thing that stinks for Kaiser is that he is, because Zipper won, the winner of this play is Zipper. So Kaiser's going to get, if he wins here today, will get six points right off the bat because Zipper or Mancuso, if Mancuso wins, will get six points. But we'll, we'll, we'll see. We'll see what happens with the ice pick and big time. Hey, he could also lose one of his, you know, his star players if uh, Zipper or Mancuso gets knocked out in that ne next match. But it, being around Kaiser in Vegas, I can tell you that's not the only thing that stinks about him. I think it's always dangerous for a faction to rely on one horse, quote unquote, to carry water all the way to a championship. But if the usual suspects think Ethan is that guy, I think he's as good a choice as you can have. But upsets happen. Could we see another one today? Before we get to the match itself, here to hype you up as always is the great Nerd Chronic with yet another killer promo. Check it out. I gotta tell you, I'm thrilled to have him in the tournament because he is gonna mow through that thing like it's nobody's business. Well, I guess I owe everyone in the Schmodown singles tournament an apology. Ethan's journey begins here. Ethan Irwin reasserted his dominance as one of the 
top players in the game today as far as the singles league goes. To have his last two matches go into sudden death overtime and go many questions deep into that, let there never, ever, ever be a question of the caliber of player that Ethan Irwin is. Is it intimidating to go up against him, or do you think this could be the one that really breaks you out to, for you to make the move? Oh, uh, you know, I'll look him up. Do you know how boring you people are with all your opinions? I don't know if the ice pick can beat Sabrina Ramirez. Ooh, I don't know if Kaiser even has a rookie that can win a game. So yeah, why not just be wrong again by saying that there's no chance I can beat Ethan Irwin? Because he's a giant slayer. You saw what Oyama did to Merle last year. I'm expecting the same thing from a guy who goes by the name The Ice Pick. The Ice Man, he's the Ice Pick, he's the Ice Something. I, I feel bad, I really do. Vinny Mancuso, he won a, a play-in match. So sorry to let him know that he is just the tiniest little speed bump. Last season, he was good, but he wasn't great. Now, again, he is great. Because he's a former champion, I should just say thank you for the opportunity, Mr. Irwin, and then just roll over. I'm not like these other rookies, just, ooh, I'm a guy in a graphic t-shirt, and I'm so happy to be here. I'm here to win. Look, he's new on the scene, and yes, we were all rookies once. I was a rookie once. Rachel Cushing was a rookie once. So maybe he's got what it takes to beat me, but I don't see it happening. Vinny the ice pick also remodels bathrooms. Look at that. Guy did all this nice work. I'm not happy to be playing Ethan Irwin. I'm excited to beat Ethan Irwin. Vinny, congrats on your win. Um, I really hope that you've been able to enjoy it because today, Ethan begins a massacre. And that's what we thought it would be. You know, you have uh, Kaiser hyping up his uh, his dude. And remember, Kaiser was not here for the uh, Vinny's first win. That was Adam Witt. So will it be different now? How it is? Uh, Kaiser managed him during his first teams match, but in the singles match in this digital age, it was with the better fit, if you will. And Sam Levine and Ethan have been working together brilliantly. So let's see. We're going to bring back both the trash mouth himself, Mr. Kaiser, and. Mm. Spider Rico, love you in uh, Rocky Balboa. Um, Thank you. You're welcome. It was a deleted scene, I believe. All right. So, Sam, uh, let me ask you this. Let me ask you this. Yeah. Uh, you have Ethan Irwin. We know at this point that you have to put all your chips on big time. Well, and Andrew Guy, obviously, in the team's tournament. But that loss sometimes against Dan Merle, sometimes a loss like that can set competitors back. Other times it really motivates them. I believe we're on the side of motivation here. Oh my God, yes. I mean, look, the, the losing to Dan Merle in a championship match in sudden death on what, question five? Like that's, there is no better way to lose if you're not gonna win a match. You know, it wasn't a KO, wasn't a TKO. It wasn't like he missed his five pointer, Dan hit his. No, they went to the wire and beyond. So there's no question in Ethan's mind, in my mind, that, that he is anything other than a top caliber champion level player. So that was a game that could have gone either way, but he took all the heat, all the momentum from how well he played in that game, and he's rolling it right on into this tournament. Yeah, and uh, to counter that garbage gullet, when you look at what fun we had in Las Vegas, certainly Kaiser, but then in the pandemic even, you seem to have continued on that fun freewheeling lifestyle of yours. Do you think that that rock and roll element, that devil may care attitude is actually perfect for a guy like Vinny Mancuso, not only come in and play well in the tournament, but pull an upset over the very focused, the very prepared Ethan Irwin. Vinny doesn't even know who Ethan Irwin is, full disclosure. He's just doing this to pick up chicks. So, you know, I'm not gonna come in here today and I'm not gonna bad mouth Ethan, big gulp Irwin, or I'm not going to badmouth Sam, Shamwow, Levine. The Schmodown was built on the shoulders of these two dicky dudes. So, I mean, Sam's one of them. He's one of the inglorious bastards. That's like better than winning an Academy Award. 
far as I'm concerned. And Ethan, I mean, he's got a Darwin Award, right, for uh, consuming the most Elmer's glue in a cubicle. So, you know, you don't take these knuckleheads uh, lightly. But for all that praise, Vinny's ready to burst that bubble. Sammy, any response to that, uh, whatever that was? <laughs> You've been sniffing glue, dude? You feeling all right? You see this? This is one of your checks, one of your royalty checks, Levine, from Eight is Enough. I don't know why it got sent to my house, but I'd be happy to put it in the mail for you. You can uh, hang on to that. Those are down to under 10 cents now. Don't worry about it. I'm a big, big Dick Van Patten fan, so I just might. All right, listen, Ooh. put you both in the uh, waiting room at the moment. And uh, we are going to now put them in there as we get ready to, ready to go. Mark, are you ready? Yeah, keep them in there for a while. I wasn't ready, Christian, but then at the last second, Kaiser coming up big with a Dick Van Patten reference. Let's do this for all of Druidia. Well, ladies and gentlemen, it's time for the movie trivia showdown. Introducing first, representing the dungeon with a record of one win, no defeats. This is Vinny the Ice Pick Man Chuso. New setup here today, Ice Pick. Yeah. Where 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 are we uh, broadcasting from today? Uh I'll get back to you. Fair enough. All right, so Vinny, you are going up here against Ethan Big Time Irwin, who is a former champion. He you just saw, or maybe you didn't see what he just had a, a very stellar performance against uh Dan Merle, the current champion. And it was down to the wire. Do you watch matches like that? Do you know what Ethan is capable of? Or, or does that intimidate you at all? You just say, you know what? This is my moment. Uh, well, you know, I said I'd look him up. I uh, forgot to look him up. Uh, I'll probably look him up after the match, see what his deal is. But no, I mean, what? everyone keeps asking, are you intimidated? Are you scared? What? There's no reason to be intimidated. I, I, there's, there's no reason to believe that I can't beat this guy. There, there, I, there is no intimidation. You keep, you mentioned uh, Mount Rushmore. You ever been to Mount Rushmore? It's just rocks. It's boring. What, 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 what am I afraid of Mount Rushmore? No. The answer is no to that. Good. Okay, no uh, fear. But Vinny, as far as you instilling fear in your opponent, you really embracing the ice element of your character. So if you had to compare yourself to another movie character who uses cold on their side, Iceman from Top Gun, Brian Bosworth from Stone Cold, the undead snowman and Jack Frost, who would you say you are? And why does that put fear in the heart of anyone you face in the movie trivia showdown? Uh, I would say I'm Elsa from Frozen, which I assume big time has not seen. It's not it's probably not wrong all right so i'm going to put you in the waiting room as we wait for your opponent good luck to you Vinny. christian the guy's not scared he is not scared doesn't seem like it and his opponent representing the usual suspects with a record of 10 wins five defeats and four knockouts he is the former movie trivia schmodown champion of the world, Ethan Big Time Irwin. Ethan Big Time Irwin, you are back. The uh, Have you named the character yet behind you there or still don't have one for the little guy yet? I, I, you know what? I, we'll, we'll do a naming contest at the end of the season. It's fine. Uh, I'm, I'm, le I'm leaning with Russ. All right, so, Ethan, uh, that match against Dan Merle was one of the better matches we've seen uh, all season, maybe maybe ever, in championship caliber. And I don't know. I mean, I know you're a competitive guy, and I don't know if it – a loss always stings. But when you play that way, knowing you're going to the tournament, do you look for blood kind of going into the next match? I mean, look, yes, no one likes losing. And would I – do I wish that the chips fell the other way? Sure. But, you know, to go out like I did, I felt okay about that. I felt, you know, it didn't sting as much as uh, the New York time did. And, yeah, no, it was invigorating, and I'm excited to get right back in it. I'm excited to, you know, not have to wait months between matches. I like that I have one, you know, just like a week later. So I'm, I'm really stoked to get into it. 
Uh, Ethan, two questions. You can choose which one you want to answer. Question number one, how many of the Avengers have called you today to chat? And question number two, you hear that you're introduced with a 10 and five record. So what is the one thing that you take from all that experience into a match like this? Um, uh, three Avengers have called me and the experience is, you know, do I feel, do I have a lot of confidence based on those 10 wins and four knockouts? Yeah. But I also, you look at the other side and there have been five defeats and, you know, even though this guy uh, who seems like a really nice guy, I've never met him, Vinny, uh, is a rookie. I was a rookie. Rachel Cushing was a rookie. Sam was a rookie. So, you know, you can, you, you never know. You never know what you're going to spin. You never know what questions you're going to get. So I have to, you know, I, I'm not like resting. I have to play like I played against Dan. All right. Well, Ethan Irwin, he is here big time looking to advance into the second round. But to do so, he's got to beat this gentleman here, Vinny Mancuso. And now we bring both competitors back and mark the rules for round number one, please. Round number one involves eight questions from eight different corners of movie trivia, schmodown, know-how. Every question is worth one point. There's no penalty for missing a question. There is no stealing in round at number one anyway. As soon as we ask the question, you have 15 seconds to write down your best attempt at an answer with whatever utensil you have handy on whatever writing surface you prefer. Once we address you by name or nickname, please show what you wrote to your camera at the same time you verbalize your answer into the microphone. Remind each competitor of your three usages of the JTE rule throughout the duration of the match. JTE, who has applied to be an Avenger, but as yet has not heard back. You can buy yourself another 15 seconds. You can get that answer from the back of your noggin to the front and write it down. You also each have one challenge to be utilized at any point throughout the contest. You may initiate the challenge, then we'll bring in your manager. They will ultimately confirm and ratify that a challenge is taking place. Christian, Vinny's doing his classic bobbing and weaving. Ethan looks cool as a cucumber, but I know you have one more query for each person. I do. Ethan Irwin, are you ready? Always be closing. Vinny, are you ready? Yes. Then let's get ready to schmodown. Round number one, question number one in the realm of action adventure. Who plays James Bond in Tomorrow Never Dies. Uh, Christian, if Bradley Cooper called me, uh, would I be accurate in saying an Avenger just called me, do you think? No. Okay, then Five, an Avenger didn't just call me. Four, three, two, one. Pens down, please, Ethan. Pierce Brosnan. Yes, and Vinny? Pierce Brosnan. Tie game, all right, here we go. All right, one for one. And your next question is in the world of romantic comedies, or the phrase I coined, rom-coms. What is the title of the 2016 Bridget Jones sequel in which Bridget discovers that she is pregnant? Okay, Christian, I just did a piece for our buddies at uh, Rotten Tomatoes. The best Bond. Who is your favorite Jimmy Bond of all time? Craig. Over Connery. Yeah. And more. It's dated. Five, four, three. Two, one, pens down, please, and Vinny. Bridget Jones's baby? Yes, Ethan. Oh, I didn't have it. Ethan did not have it. Vinny goes up there, 2-1, uh, striking first blood against Ethan Irwin. Here's the next question. Dramas. Who won a Best Actress Oscar for 2017's Three Billboards Outside Ebbing, Missouri? Hey, sometimes you need to get that first punch to wake you up, but... Uh... Just ask Tyson how that went in 89. Were you watching that fight live? I did watch that. I don't know if it was 89, though. You might be right. I think it was 90. Five, four, three, two, one. Pens down, please. Pens down. And Ethan. Francis McDormand. Yes. Vinny. Francis McDormand. Vinny's still perfect as we get to question four. All right. Question four, as one of our tech crew looks up when the Buster Douglas fight was, because we need to know. In the world of crime movies... Your question, Kim Basinger won an Oscar for Best Supporting Actress for her role in what 1997 film? Not sure how to say this. Passenger, Basinger, it's from Whatever Family. It's a Family yeah. Guy joke. It's fine. And five. Uh, repeat the question. First one. Right, again, this is in the world of crime movies. Kim Basinger won an Oscar for Best Supporting Actress for her role in what 1997 film? 
as we await the results of the Mike Tyson James Buster Douglas fight. It'll probably be. Uh, I'm curious. It'll probably be uh, Vinny. Well, I mean, not Vinny. It's five, four, PJ, three, <laughs> two, one. Pens down, please. Pens down, please. And Vinny. This is it uh, Once Upon a Time in America? That is incorrect. Ethan, to tie the game? LA Confidential. That is correct. Uh, 1990, I was right. Suck it, Alex. All right, next question. Next question. Fantasy sci-fi. Which DC EU actor plays the brother, a mute space alien that crash lands his ship on Ellis Island in 1984's The Brother from Another Planet? How in the world? Shout out to my family on Ellis Island. And maybe I missed that trivia question, Christian, because I was knee high to a grasshopper while you were starting your stand up career. That's true. Five, four, three, two, one. Pens down, please. And Ethan. Joe Morton. Yes. Vinny. Didn't have it. Didn't have it. Vinny. Uh, so Ethan now takes the lead as we get to our next question. Mark. Yeah, if that, the obscurity of that question didn't make you chuckle, maybe this next category will. Comedies. And your question. What 2001 comedy features an array of characters racing to win a $2 million prize, starring the likes of Whoopi Goldberg, Brecken Meyer, and John Cleese? I've never heard of uh, The Brother from Another Planet, Christian. I'm By the sure. way, I'm, congratulations for asking a question like that. I, good work, PJ. We just read the stuff. But right. anyway. Four, three, two, one. Pens down, please. Pens down. And now we go to uh, Vinny. Is it Rat Race? It is. Ethan. Rat Race. Correct. All right. Next question. Number seven. And this is horror slash thriller. Who directed Eddie Murphy in the 1995 horror comedy Vampire in Brooklyn? I remember a lot of anticipation for this movie. Maybe it was just in my household, but then the movie came out and it was like, ah. yeah, it wasn't very good. Yeah. I have the guy from I forgot it. five, four, three, two, one. Pens down, please. Ethan. Wes Craven. Yes. And Vinny? Wes Craven. Okay. So Erwin with six and Vinny holding strong there. Only one behind as we get to our final question here. That's right. No perfect rounds, but stellar performances so far from both gentlemen. And to close out round one strong, your final category is the world of animated movies. They're drawn with a hand or on a keyboard. Your question, which Disney animated film has a prince named Eric? I'll tell you what Vampire in Brooklyn does have, though. One of the best sidekicks in movie history. Kadeem Hardison, always great. Five, four. Three, two, one. Pens down. And Vinny? Sleeping Beauty. It's incorrect. Ethan? The Little Mermaid. That is correct. Ethan Irwin with an animated one. And, and we that's, see that's the only one I got in me. Seven, five. And now we get to round number two. With seven, five. Ethan Irwin over Vinny. Uh, next, next round. That's right. Competitors here bring the managers in to listen to my incredible rendition of the round two rules. It's the wheel round, folks. It's a virtual wheel today, so each competitor is going to give it a spin with their mind. Once they settle on a category, they're going to hear four questions in that genre of movie trivia schmodown goodness. Each question is worth two points. There's no penalty for missing a question, however, stealing, yeah, that's available now, at least in round number two. So if you're not sure of the answer, ask us for multiple choice. We give you four options, one of which is the correct answer. At that point, the value of the question goes down to one. Uh, seven to five, Christian. So Ethan Irwin, big time, is going to have his choice to spin or defer to his opponent, ratified by his manager, uh, Spider Rico. All, right. All right, we're going to remove the dungeon. And 60 seconds, Sam, to talk to Ethan starting now. Dude, that was awesome. Uh, you missed one, and I thought it was Bridget Jones and the Edge of Reason it, also. So I, don't that's worry what about I wrote it. down. So it's fine. Yeah, I figured it is. Uh, don't don't <laughs> sw don't shake it, man. You, you've got a two point lead, and you're about to add to that tremendously in round two. How do you feel? Uh, good. I mean, again, I always like to spin first. There are a you know, there's mm -hmm. Disney and Pixar on there, so that scares me a little bit. But um, uh, you know, I always go first, so I'm, let's keep doing it. 
All right, so Sam and Ethan have conferred, and now the wheel will be brought up. Ethan is choosing to go first, and here is the first spin. Here it is. Oh, I'm loving the Sigourney Weaver, the sports. This is a solid wheel, Christian. There's a lot of good stuff. There's a lot of bad stuff, too, but it's all right. I like the Merle wheel better. Oh, Spinner's like Choice. It's the wheel so far. Spinner's Choice. You got, you got the Midas Touch on this thing, my friend. What would you cheese, like? Cheese and crackers. Um, let's, yeah, let's discuss for a second. I mean, obviously, I should do one of the categories. I, can I just ask, has anyone done Sigourney Weaver, or is that a completely untouched? S Sam, do you know, has anyone picked uh, Sigourney Weaver ever? Has that, is, that, is that like an untouched category? I, I, to my knowledge, no one has taken Sigourney Weaver. Maybe it's come up, but if it has, it's one time. So Got it. I Let's say go it. for it if you like Let's it. Try. Yeah, I okay. like it. I like it. Great. All right. So Ethan is going to choose uh, to have Sigourney Weaver movies as his category. Going to remove Sam. And now, Ethan, you're going to get four questions in the realm of Sigourney Weaver movies. Are you ready? I am. All right. Here, here's the first question in the realm of Sigourney Weaver, first one. Sigourney Weaver plays the character Ellen Ripley in how many films in the Alien franchise? Four. That is correct. All right. That was quick. Question two. In what film does Sigourney Weaver play real-life activist Diane Fossey? Gorillas in the Mist. Yep. Question three. In the 2001 comedy Heartbreakers, Sigourney Weaver plays a woman who pulls cons with her daughter. Who plays her daughter? Jennifer Love Hewitt. Yes, it is. Ethan Irwin cleaning up thus far, and here is your last question. Here it is. Ethan, what is the name of the starship that the title TV show revolves around in Galaxy Quest? Uh, do you need the like the three-letter thing before it, or can I just say the protector? Yes, that is that is two points. All right, so Ethan Irwin just cleans house in that round, and now we're going to remove Ethan, and we're going to bring in Kaiser. All right, Kaiser, 60 seconds. Here we go. Let's spin the wheel, Vinny, because here's the thing. You're going against a guy whose nickname is Big Toe. He's bound to, he's bound to stub it again, okay? So you drew blood the first time. I love your style of play, man. Smooth, silky. You're the ice man. You're a little bit smoother than smearing off ice. You know what I'm saying? So let's give this wheel let's give this wheel a spin and see what we got. You All got right. anything to say to me? I don't. Okay, good. All right, here your wheel is up, and Mancuso is getting the spin. Here it is. And just for that response, Christian, I want to give Vinny Spinner's choice. I know it's not legal, but <laughs> me too. And Tom Hanks. Tom Hanks, 60 seconds to decide starting now. You know, personally, there's so many like creep, deep, sneak movies with Tom Hanks that I, I don't like it. But you tell me where you feel. Okay, that's what I thought. All right, here it is. Here's the second spin. Whatever Vinny lands on here, he's got a take, Mark. It's about time one of my guys listens to me on this wheel uh, round. Getting away from America's Shot. sweet. Wow. Not to the, the smasher there. Look at that. And we land on. Oh, no. Lynch choice. Opponent's choice. All right, so now we're going to bring back uh, both Sam and Ethan. Maybe they shouldn't have listened to Kaiser on that one. And here's the uh, here here is sixty seconds to decide. Everything's coming up, Millhouse, huh? Well, um, crackers. That's a toughie. I'm, yeah, sorry. Right? I'm sorry, that's a toughie. That is a toughie. Uh, uh, what I, do you, you tell me? I know what I'm thinking. You tell me because I I don't know. I've only seen his one other match, so I do not know what his weaknesses are. I know what mine are. Fair enough. <laughs> well, uh, I would suggest that we either give him the category he spun away from, Tom Hanks, since he wasn't sure about it, yep. uh, or since none of these young kids seem to know any movies pre-2000, we could give him 90s, or we could lean into one of your other strengths. And I don't want to say out loud, but I know you know what that is on the wheel. It's true. I suppose let's do that one. Why you want to do that one? Yeah. All right. We're going to go with uh, Catherine Bigelow Films. Catherine Bigelow Films. All right. So we're going to remove Sam. And we will bring back Vinny here. All right. Vinny, you're going to get four questions in the realm of Catherine Bigelow films. Are you ready to go? Yes. All right, Mark. All right. And as a bonus, you get my Vermont maple syrupy voice reading them. Four questions. Each one's worth two points. Here's question number one. Who plays Bodie in 1991's Point Break? It's 
Uh, 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 oh my god. Uh, Patrick Swayze. Via Condios, it's correct for two points, Christian. All right, question number uh, two. All right, Vinny. Which Oscar nominee stars in the Bigelow film Strange Days as Lenny Nero? Let's go uh, multiple choice. All right. Is it A, Bill Paxton, B, Willem Dafoe, C, Ralph Fiennes, or D, Alfred Molina? Can you repeat the options? Is it once? So again, that's your one usage of that. Is it A, Bill Paxton, B, Willem Dafoe, C, Ralph Fiennes, or D, Alfred Molina? D, Alfred Molina. That is incorrect. So, Ethan, for a one-point steal opportunity, I'm going to repeat the question and the options. In the world of Catherine Bigelow, which Oscar nominee stars in the Bigelow film Strange Days as Lenny Nero? Is it A, Bill Paxton, B, Willem Dafoe, C, Ralph Fiennes, or D, Alfred Molina? It is C, Ray Fiennes. Also goes by Ray. I just call him the star of Strange Days. That is a big one-point steal for Ethan. It's another steal for Ethan. That is correct. All right, here's the next one. All right. Vinny, back to you for a possible two points. Your penultimate question in the world of Catherine Bigelow. In the Catherine Bigelow film, The Weight of Water, which Oscar winner stars as award-winning poet Thomas James? Let's go multiple choice. All right. Is it A, Tim Robbins, B, Sean Penn, C, Ethan Hawke, or D, Ralph Fiennes? Can you uh, repeat the question? First one, second one, second one. Yeah, second JT rule. In the Catherine Bigelow film, The Weight of Water, which Oscar winner stars as an award-winning poet, Thomas James? You gotta repeat the options one. I'm getting there. Oh. This is it A, Tim Robbins, B, Sean Penn, C, Ethan Hawke, or D, Ralph Fiennes? Sean Penn. That is correct for a point as I'm rushed through round number two. Yeah, so much, so much time, you leave on one question. Yeah, come on. <laughs> I'm, I'm milking my face time. All right. Move on to your last question, Vinny. In the world of Catherine Bigelow, which DCEU actor has the role of George, a senior CIA supervisor in Zero Dark Thirty? Go on, multiple choice. All right. Is it A, Mark Strong, B, J.K. Simmons, C, Henry Lennox, or D, Jai Courtney? J.K. Simmons. That is incorrect. So, Ethan, we pivot back to you for another potential one-point steal. Here's your question. Which DCEU actor has the role of George, a senior CIA supervisor in Zero Dark Thirty? Is it A, Mark Strong? B, J.K. Simmons, C, Henry Lennox, or D, Jai Courtney? I'll go to A, Mark Strong. He's the Chris Paul of steals in the schmodown because he's got another one, Christian. That's a big two points that Ethan reaped in Vinny's category of Catherine Bigelow, albeit Vinny's spinning opponent's choice. All right, so now the score going into the next round here is 17-8, 17-8, and Irwin has Mancuso on the ropes as we now get to round number three, Mark. The rules of round number three, where 10 points are a possibility per competitor, thus Vinny possibly being able to reclaim the lead, are as follows. Each competitor is gonna give us a series of numbers. We need three numbers from each competitor. These numbers may range from one to 20. You may not pick the same numbers as your opponent. Why is that? Well, each one corresponds to a unique category of movie trivia, schmodown, know-how. Your first question is worth two points. Your next one is worth three points. And your last one, should we make it that far? Five big points that once again, Christian, could see Vinny possibly taking the lead over Ethan Irwin. But before we get there, we need numbers. And since Ethan enjoys a nine point advantage, Ethan, your three numbers that you feel most fortunate about. Uh, I'll do uh, 17, seven, and one. 
17, 7, and 1 for big time and forbidden. Great numbers. 2, 8, and 6. 2, 8, and 6 for Vinny. And because Ethan will be going second, Sam, you have 60 seconds to talk to Ethan starting now. This is a beautiful, beautiful place to be in, my friend. Uh, the pressure is certainly not on us right now. He's got to go three for three to kick it back to you. Uh, I feel so good about how you've been playing, and uh, I don't want to. I don't want to waste your time, man. So uh, stay in the zone. Thanks. All right, cool. So Kaiser, sixty seconds. Talk to Vinny starting now. <clears throat> Vinny, I don't care if this guy's got credits on the Emoji Movie or the Human Centipede trilogy. He's just a man. He bleeds like everybody else. Uh, you know, he still plays with action figures. Maybe someone should talk to him about that, but whatever. This is your round, baby. Clean the slate, make it happen. Answer the questions like you know how. And let's do this. All right, so Vinny is up. He needs to hit all three of these questions. And we start here, category eight for the two-pointer. Category eight, Vinny, you chose for your two-pointer, the realm of Tarantino. Tarantino for two points. Who plays DiCaprio's loyal house slave Steven in Django Unchained? Samuel L. Jackson. Samuel L. Jackson is correct for two points. All right. Vinny's still alive here as we get to the next one, which is category two. Category two. And that is in the realm of the 2010s. We're from 2010 to 2019. Three-pointer. Chris Buck and... Jennifer Lee directed this 2010s Disney film. Do I, I have a JT? Yes. You, you it? Okay. All right. Again, 2010, 2010s movies. Category. Chris Buck and Jennifer Lee directed this 2010s decades film. This is the last JT role. Okay. Five, four, uh, two, three. and your winner. By way of technical knockout, Ethan Big Time Irwin. We're looking for Frozen. Frozen was the answer. Frozen, Vinny, going to remove you for a moment here. Ethan, Big Time win for Big Time Ethan Irwin. And, uh, you know, let's start with you, Ethan. You looked relaxed. You looked calm and you got everything. You missed that one question in the first round. You kind of shook it off and and it, it, you just it seemed like you left off right where you were with the Merle and you're, you're playing that kind of light out. Did you feel the same way? I did. Yeah, no, it was. Uh, th I'm glad I was able to kind of jump right back into a match because, yeah, I still felt like I had the same momentum, the same energy. Um, and look, I got a lucky break. I got Spinner's choice, and he caught a bad break. So, yeah, and that happens. And, and Vinny, I'm sorry, but uh, no, it was great. I it was I it was great, and uh, I got more points on this than I could have gotten from Merle. So, yeah, Sam, what did Ethan show you today? To echo Christian's sentiment, coming off such an emotional W fairly recently, and then getting right back in the ring here, didn't show any rust. As a matter of fact, looked in as good of movie trivia shape as we've seen. So, the fact that he's able to maintain that focus. What does it tell you as his manager? Oh my God, that he is the greatest uh, trade uh, I or any manager could have possibly made uh, at the Schmodown trading deadline. Uh, so I am I'm so thrilled that he is on board with the suspects. Um, I, I mean, his look every, every player studies at this point who wants to be competitive, but study or not, Ethan's base level of knowledge, I truly believe is second to none in this league. So I am thrilled he's on board. Uh, he picked up right where he left off. The timing on this was really great for us that he was able to go from that, you know, super close match that he, he couldn't, you know, win the belt, but then immediately get into this tournament and start kicking butt and taking names. And, and I'm, I'm thrilled to have him on board. 
You know, I got to ask you this. Uh, you, uh, you, well, first, before we even get into this, Ethan, next up, we have the dungeon yet again. Uh, Eric Zipper, who has shown he has really has improved his game tremendously. Uh, yeah. He was a great player when he came into the league, and he's just gotten that much better at TKO over Paul Preston, which not a lot of people saw coming. So how do you prepare for an Eric Zipper and the dungeon again? And how do you have to are you lucky that you don't have to smell Kaiser's breath in person? I mean, I actually grew to really like that scent, so I miss it. That's fine. But I would say that, uh, yeah, look, I mean, I, I'll prepare in the same way I always do. I, you know, I'm going to keep reading up on the areas and watching the movies in the areas that I am not so good at. I got an animated question today. I'm you really did? proud of myself. Um, but yeah, it was, uh, I, I, I'm just going to keep doing what I always do. But but yeah, is he a little scary? Definitely scarier than the guy that I, when, I when he first came on the scene, for sure. Uh, and now, Sam... I moved to the teams tournament here because yeah. you know we're we're not too far away from it. Tomorrow, two days from now, we see uh, Bateman and, and Merle will go for the title, and then the tournament starts in just about a month. The teams mm-hmm. tournament that is. So Andrew Guy, when he played Bateman a couple of weeks ago, I'm not. It didn't look like he was going to play. Change his mind, and obviously now him and Ethan are going to be playing together. Are you and, and and by the way, Andrew Guy, one of the best teams players, teams records that, that has ever played. He's made to two different teams finals. So, how confident are you in this team with Guy and uh, Irwin, even though we are about a month away? I am so confident. At the end of the day, Andrew Guy is a competitor built for teams. Um, you know, he stands great on his own. He puts on a show like no one else. But when it comes down to movie trivia knowledge. He completes so many other players in a way. He's the he's the own negative of teams players. <laughs> uh, he he fills in everybody else's gaps. So he is such a great asset. I am so excited that he and I were able to have a little powwow, a little regroup session, and figure out exactly what the strategy was for uh, him and Ethan to go forward and. Uh, I am I am very very happy that that match is is uh, you know coming down the pike and also uh, back to this real quick I do want to echo what Ethan said uh, about Vinny he did get a bad break we spun spinners he landed on opponents that is tough to rebound from sure. no matter how good of a player you are so I do want to give props to him I know this yeah. you know he made it to round two of of, of the matches he had to you know win that little play in match so. For, as far as I'm concerned, this was round two for him, and uh, and and he was a heck of a player, and he put up a great fight, and I expect to see him again in the future. In the Classy and victory as we have both Sam Levine and Ethan Irwin. Congratulations. We'll see you in the next round against Eric Zipper. Sam and Irwin. Irwin picking up four big points for the suspects as they advance to round number two. All right. Thank you, gentlemen. And now we're going to bring back the ice pick. Kaiser. Vinny. Look, this was like like they said, this was a spinner's opponents. You had him uh, pretty, you struck first blood there in that first round. Did you, did you think that you, you know, you you were you were able to, what, was it the second round that threw you off there when he gave you Catherine Bigelow? I mean, listen, listen, listen. It, as soon as he got, uh, what was it? Opponent's choice, a little worrisome, a little worrisome. Uh, as soon as I spun whatever, Pretty worrisome. I mean, you can't. It doesn't go worse than that. The only thing, like, I the my friggin' roof could have collapsed. It would have been about the same luck. Like, that's just. I'm already going against uh, Ethan. Uh, uh, what's his face? He's good. He's obviously one of the best. Props to the man. I'm so happy I played him. It was a good time. But I'm already playing him. I get this bad rap. It, it, it was a big hill to climb, and I'm not really good at climbing hills. Yeah, Kaiser, you know, you hear Vinny's words, but I'm going to ask you a question now, and you can feel free to pass this baton to Ice Pick, because the query is thus. We've seen a lot of team members and faction mates, once they lose or get knocked out of a tournament, continue to help and contribute, help their neighbors study within the faction. Do you see Vinny in that kind of role for someone like Eric Zipper, who now has the match of his tournament against Ethan Big Time Irwin? Uh, I would say that the Ice Pick is one of the most faithful members of the dungeon. He's there to help everybody out. And I got two words for you guys. Rematch. Okay? Because, first of all, spinners, opponents, I mean, you're playing against this guy, Erwin, and we got to go up against that. 
tough, uh, tough sledding, as they say. You know, and, and and not for nothing, I wiped the floor with those Sigourney Weaver questions. Maybe throw in copycat or baby mama. Mix it up a little bit, kids. Okay? She's one of the greatest actresses in the history of cinema. So I'd like to rematch because I think Vinny could hang with this guy. The way we trained, the way we prepped, I like Vinny's chances against anybody in the league right now. He will be back. He will bounce back. He loves this game. And hey, punk rock is alive, baby, in 2020 and 2021 as far as I know. I don't even know what year it is right now after quarantine. I'm lucky I can get my hair washed. Well, I you yeah. were there, get my hair washed. I don't I, wash my own I, hair. I didn't think so. Uh, can you tell me about this? Uh, after watching this, though, Kaiser, knowing that uh, Zip has Ethan next. So what do you take from this match that you bring back and, and tell Zip? Well, look, we trained for Irwin. We know how to beat Irwin. And 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 not for nothing, we played a, we played a, a virtual match against Irwin, so to speak, because, you know, I got the best computers in the dungeon. I got a couple guys from the Philippines I flew in to help us build the new system. So I can pretty much replicate any player in the Schmodown in, in like an Ivan Drago sort of sense of the, of, the, of the construction. So Zipper can beat anybody in the league right now. The only person who's going to beat Zipper is himself, and he's not going to do that because he is the Z1000. I look forward, to, and I got to thank, let me just before I go, let me thank Adam Kaiser for stepping in and getting Vinny the ice pick, his first singles win. Let me thank Adam Witt for all of his training and all he contributed. Those two guys were huge in in, in Vinny's uh, entrance into singles, and I can't thank him enough. And that's the dungeon. We're family, all for one and one for all. You will, you will see bigger things from the ice pit. He's ready to play. I'm telling you, Christian, he's ready to play this game. Oh, I, I have no doubts. Yeah, get it, Mark. Yeah, Christian, would you mind if I asked uh, Ice Pick one more quick question? Because Kaiser did bring up uh, Adam Kaiser. Vinny, do you have a preference as to who you would prefer to have be your direct manager in a match now that you've had two different managers within the faction? Is it Adam or is it the other Kaiser? Um, I honestly did not notice that they were different people, so. Fair question. Hey, Mark, Mark. by the way, we know where you park your PT Cruiser across from Church's Chicken, so watch your back. Watch your back. That is right. privileged information. Thank you to the dungeon here, both Vinny Mancuso and Kaiser. Look, it was, like you said, it was a tough rap. Uh, Vinny got, uh, if anytime, it doesn't matter who you are, whether you're just starting out in this league in your second match or if you've played 10 matches and Ethan Irwin gets spinners and you get opponents, you're in for a, a tough one. And Vinny, I thought, did very well in that first round he played. And you can tell Vinny's, Vinny's locked in. And I think Vinny's got a big future in the league. And Vinny will probably wind up being one of those guys that go, hey, remember, look, Mike Kalinowski in his second match played uh, the godfather, Drew McQueenie, and lost. Mike Kalinowski became one of the biggest stars that we've ever seen in this league and one of the a Hall of Fame player. I think Vinny Mancuso has that same exact uh, potential. It's just a matter of who's he playing next season? Where does he go? Does he stay with the dungeon? Does he go somewhere else? We don't know. But we, what we do know is that Ethan Irwin is advancing and the usual suspects need this. This is four more points in their uh, their victory. And they, if he can keep doing this, if he can keep winning, whether it is knockout or just a, a three in general, he gets them back up the ladder. And that's what they're looking to do here. And with the teams coming up with Ethan in there, it's not over for the suspects. They have a long way back, but it's not over. It's not, Christian. I, I think that Ethan Irwin, we'll start with him. I think that he is always going to be a threat to win a match, a tournament, whatever sort of landscape you want to put him in in terms of Schmodown. He is odds on going to become the victor, but he's playing against a new, more confident, better all-around game player, Eric Zipper, so that's not a given, and I will share your sentiment in praising Vinny and Ice Pick's attitude just because I think, I look at him like a Jim McMahon. He doesn't care who's coaching him. He may not even know who's coaching him, but still, he's got the game and the talent capable of winning him a championship one day, so keep your eyes on Ice Pick. We know he's going to be keeping his eyes on as he would say, his character's movie Frozen a little bit closer, and I think that his knowledge is only expanding in the Schmodown. So this match had everything, Christian. We had tight competition there after round number one, some spinner's luck and unluck in round number two. We even had a manager make a blood type joke. So really, there was nothing lacking in this episode of the Movie Trivia Schmodown. No, we have one more match left in round number one, and you see it tomorrow. Another play in winner. Adam Collins, the Coyote from Corruption, going up against the outlaw, John Roca. 
Can Roca just do what Ethan did and advance himself to the second round, or will the new rookie come to show up and knock Roca out? We will find out. And then this Friday, the rematch from Atlanta. The big match. That's right. For the movie trivia Schmodown championship, the Finstock exchange explodes as dangerous Dan Merle defends his title against the man he won it from in February in Atlanta, the boss, Ben Bateman, fresh off of his victory against Andrew Guy. Mark, what an event it will be. What an event. What a tournament it has been so far. And we're only through round number one. That's right, Christian. You mentioned February in Atlanta. It reminds me of another February back in 1990. There was a big boxing match, but that was then, and this is now, and we're about done with round number one, not before one more scintillating matchup that could see another huge upset or another dominant player advancing. It's all here in the movie trivia Schmodown. We invite everybody watching right now to go join the Schmodown Facebook group. That's where all the fans get their licks in and talk classily about their love of the Schmodown. And you can also enjoy us in podcast form if you just can't stand how handsome I am and how okay Christian is. Listen to us wherever you enjoy your podcast. Christian, back to you to close us out. Well, I'm decent at best. All right, guys. So thank you for joining us today for Mark Baby Carrots. Randy Queen, I'll see you guys next time. You, how dare you? <laughs>